This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 551, recorded on November 3rd, 2022. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska. Although, as I look at my radar, we've got some uh, potential snow in the forecast in the next 24 hours, which is weird. It was 75 degrees, and I was sitting on my deck last night. It's going to be snowing tomorrow, quite possibly. Of course... It's not snowing here, and we appreciate it uh, that you're out listening or listening in the podcast. We'll post a show with some world-class show notes out at TheAverageGuy.tv. Big thanks to Christian Johnson, who joined us last week. If you missed 550, lots of great conversation. Caught up kind of on a little bit of crypto. We spent a little time talking about the PC build. In fact, the board he recommended I bought. So we'll talk about that here at the end of the show or towards the end of the show. But big big thanks to Christian. And, of course, big thanks to Maple Grove Partners. Uh, for their secure, reliable, high-speed hosting. And uh, Christian talked a little bit about that as well. You could still get plans, 10 bucks a month. Great way to do it. Uh, MapleGrovePartners.com. Marv B., we also know him as Uncle Marv, is here from IT, the IT Business Podcast and a good friend of the show and just a guy, to, a good guy to hang out with. Marv, welcome to Home Gadget Geeks. Well, thanks for having me back. Good to have you. Um, last time we checked in, well... You you live in hurricane country, and Ivan made its way through. You okay? Everything? Yep, everything hurricane okay? Ian. Ian, sorry, Ian. It did a nice little path through Florida that missed us and missed all of my clients. Unfortunately, it did you know do some major damage. So I do know some people that were affected and 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 did lose some housing. But all in all, not as bad as it could have been. But uh, good. But yeah, nothing no, nothing on my end. We're glad you're safe in all those things around. Of course, it, it's it's going to continue to have um, you know implications for folks. Much damage down there. We, of course, uh, our thoughts go out to those who were in harm's way during that. We're in. We're we're heading into winter, <laughs> and uh, and it's not going to get any more mild. So everybody, be be safe out there and make sure you're doing uh, the right stuff. Marv, how is the it business podcast going? Last time we talked to you, I, it was, it was going, maybe just started going or you'd been doing it just for a couple months, but how's that going? Yeah. When we talked last, I had just gotten it back into full swing. The podcast was a rebranding of my old podcast called Podnuts pro rebranded in January as the it business podcast. I had to take a little hiatus right at the start of the year, right as I was launching, because my mom got sick mm. and uh, got it, went into the hospital, got diagnosed with multiple myeloma and, you know, a couple of weeks where she was in the hospital. So literally we shut down. I did work, but, you know, the weekends were traveling to her, which is two and a half hours away. So, but she's, you know, I'm not going to say that she's all better. She's out of the hospital, she's home, but she's on a situational plan right now where she's she's going to be in treatment the rest of her life. Mm. And uh, mm. sorry to hear at, that. At seventy-one years of age, um, or yeah. seventy-four. I'm sorry, seventy-four. She's uh, this is her life. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that's where we were. Yeah. You know, I had just gotten the the show back in full swing and it's going well now where we've got Good. probably about 80 shows this year already. So we've been wow. cranking them out. What do you, what do you think's the, like for someone who's maybe never heard it before and you were going to give that quick elevator speech of why they should listen, like, what would you tell them? So the IT business podcast is basically a show for IT professionals, anybody from computer repair to managed service providers, system administrators, anybody that wants to learn how to do business networking support better, smarter, and faster. Oh, nicely done. Good job. Way to have that elevator speech <laughs> ready to go. Have you had any um, you had any guests that you were particularly like that really did did well? I mean, I'm sure they've all been great, but... Any real standouts in there? It's, it's funny. The, the the better guest in terms of feedback yeah. have actually been lawyers. 
So we have <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got two in particular. One that is down here in my area, and I've had him on the show many times. And then a new girl that we met at a recent conference. And you know, the IT industry as a from a managed service perspective, uh, outside IT that is doing services and stuff. A lot of things have changed for us in the last few years with the compliance, you know, HIPAA, NIST, and all of that. And the insurance companies are actually putting more and more responsibilities on us that if something happens, we're actually going to be held responsible. Whereas before, it was always on the business. And so these attorneys have come on and we've talked about some of those topics. Wow. And, okay. you know, it's weird because those are the ones that I don't think that they're really engaging conversations, but they're topical yeah. and they're something like yeah. we have got to protect ourselves. Yeah. So those have gotten the most traction, which is odd because I would normally think that tech to tech conversations, you know, are conversations about Synology or network testers, Yeah, yeah. but it's the attorneys. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so much content out there now. Uh, around some of the, you know, when I started doing this 11 years ago, there was, I mean, there were a lot of tech podcasts, but you could like, we could cover things that just weren't being covered anywhere else. And now, you know, the stuff we talk about, yeah, there's 20 other people on YouTube and there's yeah probably two or three other podcasts or whatever. So the information is just more accessible, which is fine. Like, I mean, I think it, it allows us to have some great conversations that, aren't you know i watch a lot of these reviews and as i've been building this pc you know i'm watching all these reviews on youtube right and there's a you know if you say you want to do a you know a 3080 ti you know nvidia card you can literally watch about 50 reviews on those things just right. go one after the other after the other and but there's there's not community often and sometimes there is i don't want to say there's not but you know, I don't necessarily feel, feel the same community connection that I would, you know, to you guys, yep. to you guys here. Not good or bad. Certainly, those reviews are awesome, and uh, and they're they're very very helpful in that. It's just a yeah. different landscape, right? <clears throat> it is. Oh, it yeah. is. And we're trying to do more stuff that focuses on the business side of IT. And you know, I'll have stories like my podcast two two podcasts ago on four fifty three was about a lady who fell into her business overnight. Her boss literally called her at 8 p.m. and said, hey, guess what? Tomorrow morning, the business is yours. And her telling that story and how do you make that transition from tech to business owners? Uh, we're having more people on that talk about not necessarily marketing, but like brand imaging. What does it mean, you know, to be a brand? And how do your customers see you and why do they even hire you? So we're kind of taking a little twist on some topics that for, you know, companies that are, you know, either just outsourced, you know, working for businesses or you're an IT business owner, you know, you're a solo tech and you, you're trying to get those business clients. This is what they're looking for. So we're trying to do more topics that uh, focus on that. Yeah, good. Good. I think it's when the, you know, you get into a niche and that's when you get, um, I think that's when it gets really interesting because it's not for everybody, but for the folks who are looking for it at the time, uh, that it's very important, you know, and, and so, uh, good for you. Well, I'm glad that's going well for you. I know, I think the last time, last time we had you, you were at a family reunion and you were yes. coming in remote, right? <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> the, the, the last time there were How'd that go? I know sometimes family reunions can be a little <laughs> sketchy. Yeah, yeah, but this one was good. It uh, turned out great. It was over the Fourth of July weekend, mm. and it was in Kissimmee, Florida. And yeah, I did the I did the podcast from the. Yeah. We didn't get a hotel. We were actually at one of those VRBO places, yeah. and it was all you know rental type uh, apartments. Mm -hmm. So I did it from there, and it turned out to be great. We didn't go to any parks. The family all decided to stay together, and we did stuff there at the complex. And oh, good! It turned out good. It was about good. about fifty of us. Nice, yeah. That that's nice when, because like the parks, you know, you're down, you're down there in, in the magic world, and um, the you know the that, that's a lot. It's a lot of effort to get to those things, 
that many people think about the expense of that as well. So, um, you know, good, good on you guys. We stayed in a Airbnb. Maybe it was, it, was that what, it, was that what they are? Um, uh, when we went out to Colorado and, uh, you know, I've always just done hotels and the kids talked us into this. I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, hotels are nice. Everything's there. You know, you don't know it. And I, I don't know if I'll go back to doing hotels that way, you know, staying this, this, if we can find this house again, open when we went, they had everything, you know, we needed, we cooked, we, you know, we, we went to the grocery store, bought food, put it in the fridge. It was way more convenient than a hotel. Yeah. The one we stayed at was actually, it was almost like, you know, how you see those complexes where there's, you know, four and five buildings. Well, this is, looks like it was meant to be an apartment complex, but it was actually purchased by an organization that they rented out. And we were actually able to get five, um, what did they call them? They call them villas and not even apartments. Oh, nice. But nice. They were three yeah. bedroom, three bedroom villas. Nice. And it was the whole thing. It was basically an apartment with a yeah. you know, full living room, full kitchen. Nice. Um, so we did all of our stuff there. And, yeah. you know, we tried to do the hotel, but, you know, getting everybody on the same floor yeah. is almost impossible. Yeah. The rooms, yeah. you're not going to find a three bedroom hotel room. <laughs> right. So, right. No, it's a good way to do it. It's a good, way to do it. good, good. Well, glad to, glad to hear it. Um, we are now recording this here. It's uh, November. Let's pretend for a second that it's still October and it was it's cybersecurity month uh, in October every year. We at Gallup spend a lot of time thinking about that. Our data is super important. We can't have it going somewhere else during the month of October. CHI Health, which is our, one of our uh, one of our think two health providers here in the city of Omaha, uh, they didn't really say, but I'm pretty sure they had a ransomware attack and they they went offline for two weeks. Which my annual physical and and my annual prostate exam was during this time, so they were literally doing it on paper, which is a little scary. When I went to have blood work done. The lab tech said, well, uh, which tests are we supposed to do? And I'm like, I, you, you think <laughs> I know? Like, I rely on you guys to know these things. She's like, yeah, well, as you know. And I'm like, so how are you guys doing this? She's like, not, she said, not very well. Like, it's, it's so it's serious business. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, they're going to have to re input all those records that they, that they generated during those two weeks they were down. Plus, I haven't seen even a bill or a statement since I did those things two weeks ago. Generally, CHI was very, very fast. So ransomware is the real deal now. And I think everybody knows that. But you said a stat. Is it a billion now? Or what was the stat you said to me? Yeah. So there was a recent uh, study that was put out where U.S. banks reported for 2021 that more than a billion dollars in ransomware payments were made. Now, first of all, this is only the ones that are reported. Right. So there's right. a lot that don't get reported, yeah. but a billion. And it was the largest ever on record, of course. Uh, and it was an increase. Um, I was trying to find the notes here, but it almost doubled 2020. Yeah. You're, you're in the trenches with the small business owner, small and medium sized business, SMBs, as Microsoft used to call them. Um, are they, uh, yeah, what's the, what is your feeling as far as their, yeah, of course, ransomware folks go after big, but they also probably go after anybody they can get, you know, their attention to how, how are you feeling about your small and medium sized business folks in this area? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, a a long road to hoe is, as I like to say, <laughs> yes, because most of the small businesses are like, you know what? We don't have anything. They're not coming after us. Mm, mm. But the problem is they are. They're just throwing seeds out. You know, just think about it. If you're just throwing stuff in the field, wherever stuff takes hold. And to be able to get 10,000 from a small business, I mean, you get a bunch of those, you, you know, you get 50 of those and you're doing pretty good for the year. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, it's weird to to try to do that. But trying to explain to them how even the smallest business is at risk. Right. And there was another 
thing that I found out. So uh, I subscribe to a thing called the HIPAA journal because I have HIPAA clients. And also in 2021, only 88% of companies that were hit with a ransomware were able to recover all of their data. Mm, yikes. So that's what I tell people is, okay, if you were to lose your data today, how would that affect your business? And most of them surprising would be like, well, we'll just go back to paper and pen, like your hospital there. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. A lot of them can't do that mm -hmm. because they're in situations where a lot of my lawyers, if they lost that data, they're in contempt. They're, you know, they're going to be sued. And a lot of companies will go out of business because they can't reproduce all of that stuff. And the way I tell people is if you lost all of your photos at your house, you know, how would that affect you? And then translate that to what it would mean for business. Yeah. So even though October was, you know, awareness month, most people aren't aware. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's getting, I think there's awareness or more awareness. Let's say, let's put it that way. I think a lot of people don't know what to do about it. Like the average consumer, like you and I and the listeners to this podcast, we're in pretty good shape. We've got our data offsite somewhere fairly well blocked off from a ransom perspective. You know, I, I've got all my stuff in a B2 backup that's, that's pretty well protected from any of those kinds of things. If I had a ransomware attack here, I could just shut everything off, reformat it, bring all that stuff back, right? Um, but I think the average consumer and, and maybe in some cases, the, the average small business isn't, they're not thinking all the way through that, right? They don't know what to do. Don't you think? Yeah. And what happens is it's really more of convenience, right? I'll right. do security when it's convenient right. for me. Right. right. And the other thing that came out in this report was that um, 18 percent of organizations in this survey were following the three, two, one backup rule. Mm, yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> That's <laughs> not, not very good. good. That's not very so good. So yeah. it, it's one of those things where people are like, yeah, I know, I know, but I want to do what's convenient and I want to do what's cost effective for me. Yeah. So from a business perspective, I have to fight the cost of backing up that data in that three, two, one scenario. And then of course, how far do you keep the backups? Mm -hmm. You know, when we, when we last spoke, we had talked about, you know, backups where, you know, most people are doing carbonite or something and it's only yeah. 30 days, right? You know, businesses sometimes need to have that for compliance reasons, right. five or seven years. That's a lot of space and a lot of money to keep that data backed up. Yeah. And it's a lot of time to figure it out. It's a lot of time to set it up. It's a lot of time to implement it. It's a lot mm -hmm. of time to test it. Yes. But it's also a lot of time when you don't have it, right? Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes they think like, uh, you know, you can pay pay me now or pay me later, right? In that in that scenario, right? And um, so I, I think we've got to, you know, even down to the individual user, I think we've got to think through some of those. Okay, well, and a couple comments in chat. Brian says, uh, "Have you found that the larger fault seems to be between the chair and monitor, right, or software that has too many security flaws and uh, uh, you know, Joe says problem exists between keyboard and chair, right? And absolutely the, the user, the human is the weak link, right? We know that. So there's kind of two problems here. One is a ransomware viruses, whatever being introduced into the system. And that, that is absolutely a human. We are the weakest link in that, right? Um, yet there's some software solutions. There's some things people can do, especially at the enterprise level to make sure even if the human breaks down uh, that, that it doesn't get any farther, you know, uh, location authorization. So if the user is typically in Omaha, Nebraska, this request is coming from Lawrence, Kansas, they throw up flag and go, yeah. Hey, that doesn't seem right. Right. It doesn't have to come from the, from Ukraine or from Russia anymore. Like it used to come, right. That stuff that will come right. will look like it's coming here from the United States, but, we have smarter systems that kind of know, hey, 
that user doesn't, that's not typical that that user would come in from that location, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some software, some security things we can do to make that happen. But once it does get it happen, or once the, it does get into the system and you're being held ransom, then there's, what have you done from a backup perspective? Right. right? Where have you put it? Can you get it back? What's going on with your systems? What does it take to restore? Have you, have you had to do that for any any customers? And are you working with customers that are asking you for those kinds of solutions? So, <laughs> so let me answer the second one first, <laughs> because customers aren't asking for it. They're being told they have to have it because I've actually, I think four customers in the last couple of months, they were trying to get their cyber insurance renewed. Ah, uh, yeah. And the yeah. renewals are saying, okay, yeah. in order for you to get renewed, you have to prove that you're doing this, this, this. And all of it comes down to all the things we talked about. Are you, yeah. you know, password secure, unique IDs, multi factor, factor. authentication? Mm -hmm. Is there cyber awareness training? Yep. So we've now been asked to provide that cyber awareness training. And I walked into a client today. All I was doing was a site visit for an installation I'm going to be doing this weekend for a new computer and we're moving some people around. So we wanted to make sure cables were at, you know, locations and stuff. And literally as I walk in the reception is she's like, I failed your test. <laughs> <laughs> I said, excuse me. And she goes, yeah, I opened up an Amazon email and oh. I got redirected for some training. <laughs> so I had forgot that their phishing simulation is happening right now. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Actually, those we found those to be really, really helpful. And I don't have numbers I can share, but we, you know, we started uh, over the month and actually a little bit before the month started, we set some benchmarks, sent those out to the employees and got a number of like, okay. And they, you know, they, they teach us all the time. If you get spam, send it to us there. We have a spam email address. You can send it to, to let them know. And then, and, um, and each time they did it, we got a little bit better as an yeah. organization, you know, and the, the numbers went up. And I, and I think that's what really matters, right? Is that not that you get caught. All right. Well, better you get caught on the fake one than a real one, right? But right. To get really people thinking about that, you kind of want a little bit of that shame, right? But I mean, in her defense, she actually did a lot of the things you're supposed to do. She actually looked at it and said, hmm, I don't remember. It, it was an Amazon email. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And she said, okay, I did order from Amazon, but I don't know. And she actually hovered over the email address mm -hmm. to see if it was legit. The problem was, yeah, it said Amazon, but it wasn't really Amazon. So it's one of those things where they're knowing better and better, whereas before they would have never checked the email address. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's baby steps from here to there that yeah. uh, they'll get there. Well, that I, I think that awareness training is super important. And I think that's even as IT pros for ourselves, listeners to this podcast, generally folks who are in the IT space doing those kinds of things. I also, I mean, I think it's important that, you know, uh, that for, you know, families are aware of this. I mean, think of the scenario, kids in the house connected to all kinds of things, not necessarily thinking about, you know, home security from that standpoint, but it could, it could happen that way as well. And so, yeah. you know, do you send phishing emails to your kids as practice? I don't know. I don't know if you do that, but no, I haven't done that, but I did have a lady. <laughs> Uh, so I don't do a lot of residential, but I've got some legacy clients that you know, I've known for years and a lady, she's 87 and still on the computer. And she called up and said that she got one of those pop-ups and Comcast had shut down her internet and there was a number to call. And so she called them and they told her she needed to pay them, you know, $300 and yeah. stuff like that. And as she was going through the phone call, she said, this doesn't sound right. I'm going to shut this down and call my, my local IT guy. So she called me, brought the computer in. There was no malware, no ransom or anything. It was just one of those internet pop-up windows that you can't close right. you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird, you know, how much training can you do for home users? Yeah. But, well, uh, but, but maybe, you know, the, the, the ransom, you know, ransom, 
ransomware takes a certain amount of effort. And so the customer needs to be able to pay a certain amount to make it worth the time. But these scams, the scams that go on for individuals where it's like, hey, they, where they, they target people who don't know or older people who just get scared. You can watch these. There's, it's interesting to watch. There's, there's people who go now after they go back after the scammers, right? Right. And that you, you can kind of get to see how, how it kind of works. But I wonder what that number is every year of, of individuals who get scammed for a $300 no, it's, gift card. In Florida, no. it's high. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's high. They got Florida on speed dial, right? Yeah, they do. So those. to go back to your other question where you asked yeah. if I've had to do that. Yeah. So I've not had a client hit with ransomware for quite a while. And the last time that I remember having to do any true remediation, the this was a client, this is one of my better clients. So this probably explains a little bit of it. We've got them doing snapshots every hour mm. on a local appliance. And sure. that snapshot actually will check file integrity. And so we did get alerted that something had happened and we were actually able to roll back mm. fairly quickly just to the last hour wow. of data. So they lost, you know, a few minutes of work, but you know, I can't say that that's a normal situation for my no. clients. Some of them, I know that if they were to have something happen, we wouldn't know until either somebody got to a file they couldn't open or until the backup ran that night because they don't want it running during the day. It can't run till eight o'clock or 10 right. o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. But we do have at least now, it wasn't the case years ago, but as of now, every one of our customers has a very nice backup that's local cloud encrypted multiple locations so i'm i i, I can't say a hundred percent right but i'm fairly certain that if somebody got hit with something i can have them back up and running for sure the next day oh. you know with their with their backup yeah well that's a good it's just a good reminder I, the you you'd mentioned it but it's good to bring up that even individuals good right now, even though it's November, not October anymore, but we're in October. We are coming up or I mean, we're in November. We are coming up to daylight saving time here in the United yeah. States uh, in most spots around the world. And that's a good reminder, not only to change the batteries in your uh, smoke detectors or carbon monoxide detectors, if you got them, make sure they're not, this is a new thing too. I didn't realize, make sure they're not 10 years or older, right? If they're, if they're, they're done, you need to replace them at that point. Um, but it's probably a good time to check your backups, you know, yes. it, it all in this and maybe check the batteries in your UPS, right? Oh, you're checking your smoke detectors, check your UPS batteries to make sure those are still working. Would you add anything else to that, Mark? Uh, no, that's actually pretty good, especially the batteries in the, in the battery backups. Yeah. Yeah. Although we do that at the beginning of hurricane season. So <laughs> when does that, when's hurricane season start for you? June 1st. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's just a good idea. You know, most of them come with some kind of software that you can, uh, the, the smaller ones don't, but the bigger ones do. And, uh, you can connect to them and run a test off them. Most of them also have ways of doing a test on the front. So you can right. do them that way if you want to do it as well. Those batteries don't last forever. I think I've replaced them a couple of times in that, um, as well. It's also, uh, it's also, I want to say conference season cause that's, it's always, something going on with conferences but now we're kind of back to thinking about oh, okay maybe we'll go somewhere else any uh any conferences you've gone to or that you're thinking about going to that you found helpful so basically i spent from about february to last month september going to conferences hmm. so coming out of COVID, wow. of course everybody that didn't put on a conference had to put on a conference this year and so much so that conferences were stacking up on each other. I mean, sometimes two and three conferences that I'm getting invitations to in the same week. And I'm like, there's just no way. So I actually, I was scheduled to be going to two more and I just said, I'm done. I, <laughs> that's it. Uh, so I was out at a conference in Dallas, uh, which was the one where I actually went to Oklahoma city after that conference. So the ASCII group puts on nine conferences a year and they're, regional throughout the country so that their hope is that if you're local to one, you'll go to one. But that was the last one in their series of nine. So I went to that conference. I actually did a, some podcasting 
live on on site there and that was their ascii yeah. cup so it's the big the big party at the end of the year yeah what do you get you get you feel like you get enough like i always when i was going to conferences i always walked away like well i mean the parties were great and it was great meeting some people the sessions always seem to be the struggle like you, you know you feel like you got a lot out of out of going so this year there was a big shift in the presentations some of the conferences were putting a much more uh much more emphasis on teaching mm. rather than promoting so, yeah, so the ones that i go to are usually not just tech related but they're all put on by the vendors mm. so of course all the vendors if they're going to spend that much money they're going to want to pitch their product and get you to buy but this year so there was a conference called techcon unplugged it's a much smaller conference it was one that I helped start uh, in 2016. It was called the Unconvention back then yeah. because we wanted to do everything anti-conventions. Yeah. So yeah. we had no vendors right? and all the presentations were put on by us, uh, techs and business owners helping each other. So that has morphed into TechCon and it is more uh, breakout session based where you're doing, you know, sessions where, for instance, we had sessions on pricing. We had a, a gentleman got up and teach us about Wi-Fi 6 and how they do deployment. Um, he's deployed about a thousand Wi-Fi uh, endpoints. Talked about the differences between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. Um, we had um, an office manager talk about how she does her billing and accounting and receiving and all that stuff. So these are all things that if you go to the big conferences, you're not going to get those, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that was a much better thing this year. So I got more out of conferences that I normally do. That's good. Because of those sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ran the Oracle users group in Omaha. Oh, a couple hundred of us in that. We'd always have a, a twice a year, have a conference and, um, uh, it was vendor sponsored and you're right. It was hard to get, you know, for the vendors, for what they, what they got to pay or for what they paid, they get a spot to speak. But we then would try to take the money they paid and then re not reimburse, but award actual users who would come and speak with, with a monetary you'll get, Hey, if you speak, you'll get a hundred dollar gift card or whatever for speaking. So that it would, you would, you know, kind of Robin Hoodish take from the rich right. and give yeah. to the poor. And that kind of helped. And it's still, the vendors would still get, and we also identified vendor sessions. So folks knew, okay, this is going to be a vendor session or made them put their company in there. So they knew, and we tell them not to sell, but it's hard, you know, it's hard in that, in that scenario uh, for that, but had good luck with it either way. I love your unconference idea. You know, some, I think in the early days of the unconference, every you'd get there with no speakers and you'd spend yeah. that first hour, right? Okay. What do we want to do? And then people vote on them and then you assign them out and then off you go to your conference, right? Something like that. Yeah. Is that the way it works? Yeah. So they were good. They were good. The, uh, let's see what else is happening in the, so, Oh, I'm going to be a presenter at the next pod fest. Oh, nice. uh, I won't be on like a main stage or anything, but I'll be doing, um, I forget what the name of the session is, but I'll just be doing a quick little session uh, at PodFest. So that's another cool. conference yeah. that I just went to for the first time this past year where I get to learn about stuff that we're doing here now. Yeah. And that's down there in Florida, right? Yep. It's in Orlando. Yeah. 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 The conference capital of the world. Well, why, why shouldn't it be? It's the weather's great all the time. Although in the middle of the summer, it's really hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're, we're back at it. You know, it'll be interesting to see. I, I, um, you know, I, I had a meeting today and, and told my manager, it's like, you know, I'd rather go, you know, we, we have opportunities, we run conferences around the world. And I was almost like, I'd rather do our conferences than you send me to another, like I've done a ton of those kinds of conferences. I'm more interested in going, hanging out with our customers. Now I work with our customers every day. So that seems to make sense. Right. But, um, I think there's, uh, hopefully we've learned a few things through the pandemic and, and we're not just kind of going back and maybe we are, maybe we're going back to the way it was before. But, um, Brian says in the education realm, uh, there certainly has been a big influx of in-person sessions too. There's certainly a lot of qualities from in-person that are 
missed virtual. And I think that's, I think that's true and false. Like, I think there's, there's a lot of efficiency in learning. I learned a ton during the pandemic, you know, because I could consume it all here. I yeah. think we miss the, the, the in-person is really, really important though. Right. Being yeah. Around each other. I, I can tell you this. So right now we're getting a lot of invitations for virtual conferences that are two days, three days. Mm. And I'm like, I cannot be sitting in front of a zoom camera for that long. Yeah. Right. You know, I'll, I'll go to a conference because I can right. do other things and stuff. So if they can get those back to what they were, you know, maybe do a one or two hour session, then I'd be okay with it. But I think the, it, it's the same as, as remote work, you know, yeah. we're kind of, it's a, it's a weird period right now where some people are tired of working from home and want to get back in the office. Businesses are like, get your butt back in. And others are like, I'm never going back to the office. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 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 No, we're, we're battling with that now a little bit. And I was in a few days this week and I'm, I'll be home tomorrow and you know, it just, it works. It kind of works that way. And uh, yeah, we're in a, we're certainly in a flux. So. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you a question. You said yeah. you were putting on those conferences and stuff. So what, what types of conferences were those and yeah. how did you arrange it or I guess kind of like MC it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I like one, I like to MC that kind of stuff. So it worked out really well that I, cause you know, I didn't have to fight anybody for that job. I was like, I'm in charge. I'm doing the MC work. So I enjoyed that. Um, we would, it was a one day conference. It would start at nine. It would go till four. Um, we would, I had a, uh, because the Oracle space just has a ton of vendors. We would get anywhere. We'd promote to the vendors. Hey, we're doing this user group meetup for 500 bucks, whatever it was. I can't forget what it was now. Although I didn't know. I charged enough that when I left the group, I left them a surplus. Like there was like $4,000 in the bank when I oh, left. The nice. group. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it actually, <laughs> the, the, uh, the user group made money, which I don't know if we were supposed to, but we did. So, um, we meet the vendors and say, Hey, it's $500. You get a session and a table at our, you know, we would do like a vendor hall kind of thing, wherever it was at, whatever we had available to them. And there was some ground rules. Right. And then from the city of Omaha, we just invite in the user for the users. It was always free. And then we would use that money to buy food. You know, lunch was covered. So you want to encourage the users to come. So we'd always cater in some kind of cool lunch. And, um, you know, we'd run, I, I tried a couple different formats. Sometimes we'd run as many as six breakouts at a time, you know, and th to give kind of depend on the attendance and how many sp uh, speakers that I had, but we would run different breakouts knowing some of the breakouts would be small. And in some cases, it's not bad if you had three or four people, those are three or four people who are really interested in the topic that that person right. had. Right. Uh, uh, very niche. I mean, very niche topics, not you know, why you should buy Oracle, but you know, Oracle EBS 12 financials for lawyers type thing, you know, these really niche kind of, um, discussions. So we'd maybe like do a keynote. I'd get a, I'd have a big keynote speaker come, everybody'd be together. And then maybe two breakout sessions, come back together for lunch A lunch keynote, two more sessions, a closing keynote. And that'd be the end of the day. All right. It was interesting. I was definitely interested to see if you did the keynote because yeah, a lot of the conferences where we didn't have keynotes were probably the better ones. Mm. Uh, only because in our industry, I think the larger the conference, the more they feel they have to bring in, you know, a big name. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of times that keynote speaker doesn't match the yeah. vibe of the conference. Yeah. Yeah. We had that happen a couple of times. You're right. We, because it was Oracle, we would let Oracle have the, the morning keynote. We, and say, we'd say to them, Hey, send somebody, <laughs> you know, interesting, please type deal. We, we did. Eventually we found a guy, Joe Thomas was his name. He was out of San Francisco. We just kept asking him back cause he was interesting, you know? And, uh, and so in that case, uh, we would try to let the, you know, the software company be the, be the opening keynote, yeah. so to speak. And then the closing keynote, keynote would either be somebody we'd pick or they'd pay 
a little bit more to have the closing keynote, right? You know, maybe pay a thousand dollars instead of 500 to have everybody at that point. They would want things like email addresses and some of those other, you know, right, for, yeah. in, in exchange for that. And we never give them to them. <laughs> We'd say, nope, you can't, you can, you can get them at the sessions. You can ask for them, but we're not going to give you a, uh, we're not going to give you a list. And they'd always oh, say, that's well, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, ours, we always end up giving the list and you know, it, it always, I don't know who, if they hear, they hear it sucks getting yeah. back to the office and having those vendor calls. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. No. And the sad part is I, we took a couple today where, Oh yeah. I met with Marvin at such and such. And I'm like, you lie. Yeah. You lie. Yeah, that's why we didn't, you. that's why we wouldn't let him do it. You know, they could collect them in their sessions if they wanted to, if people wanted to give it to them and then we do giveaways and, and that was an opportunity for them um, you know, you might need to sign up for the giveaway or something like that. Yeah. It, it just kind of depends. So people had a choice. They didn't have to give them. We weren't giving it as part of the conference. And, uh, and we just found that that was a lot. Of, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that. So it was good. Well, we'll, we, we may employ some, when we do the meetup here in Omaha, we, we may deploy some of those same, those same tactics, but keep it fun. Right. From that standpoint, did that, that answer your question? Did you get, yeah. did you get anything out of that? Yeah, I mean, there's others that I can ask, but we'll be off yeah. topic. <laughs> yeah, no, no, right on. It was a different, it's almost like a whole different life. That was, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago now. And I feel like, did I really do that? That's a, That seems like such a long time ago. Well, what's not a long time ago is, um, is Black Friday. And I know yes. it's only the first or it's the third of November, but it's going to be Black Friday before you know it. The podcast uh, two weeks ago, Christian was on and I had some, hardware i was looking at buying and he said don't buy too much just yet <laughs> like and i think bob and ryan from thinkcomputers.org also said that like uh see what comes up on black friday so yeah. marv as you think about what's what you've seen i'm sure you've been watching some of the deal what are you seeing out there from what what do we have to look forward to do you think well it's weird because there is a big push that Black Friday isn't just Black Friday anymore. Wow. It's almost Black November. <laughs> yeah. So there are already companies right. out there, you know, advertising, you know, deals. And so I've kind of just kind of poked around and stuff. But what I'm trying to do is save a lot of it because what well, I probably didn't tell you this, but uh, on my podcast, I'm going to be doing a Black Friday preview. Hmm. And on Wednesday morning, uh, Wednesday the 23rd and it might be a full two hours of the show where we're wow. going to have some people come on and we're going to talk about a lot of the products and what's funny is like I just bought this here what is that uh, which for, is for audio it's, uh, it's an outlet that also has USB built into it and I just got this the other day because I was scrambling so as part of my tech travels you know, having those battery packs mm -hmm. were a problem because I wanted one that could power my mixer mm. by USB. And I thought, you know, I've been getting these, you know, in the bigger strips. And so I went and got one of these just to carry around in my laptop notebook uh, bag. And so I'm looking at a bunch of all of these types of gadgets that both would work for the home geek and the business geek because there's a lot of times where you know i was at the, the last conference i was at i'm sitting there doing my stuff and guys beside me their phones are dying <laughs> you know and they left the cord in their room or in their car and stuff and i'm like hey but just pull this out and plug in and, and go so there's all those types of techie things that as we you know the more and more we use our phones and our tablets even though they're supposed to have longer battery life we're using them too much. So we need little things like that to just always be able to power up wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and as we're traveling again, we're getting back into those situations. You might be in a airport and there, listen, there's a lot more plugins at airports than there used to be, but I remember the days where there weren't very many. And so I'd always carry a, one of those three in one, you know, you can plug it in, you get three ports. And I was yeah. say, hey, can I, can I plug this in and share it with you? And they'd always say yes. Right. A great opportunity to, to do that, those, those kinds of things. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, fire, if you were ever going to buy a fire tablet, 
the probably Black Friday is the time to do it. If you were gonna upgrade your A Lady device, your Amazon device, Black Friday is probably the time to do it, right? I mean, I just I get that feeling, don't you? I, I do, but do you get the feeling that we're kind of in a phone frenzy right now? Uh, yeah, that's that that may be the truth too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of wonder that phones might be the big winner this mm -hmm. year as everybody's, you know, the foldable Samsung right, uh, right, is out. Right. And I wonder how, you know, iPhone has announced that they're going to go universal with their power plug with the mm -hmm. USB-C. But the next set of phones are still going to be lightning. So I wonder how that's yeah. going to affect things. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think I think you might be right. I think this may be the time everybody's coming out of the pandemic and they're thinking like, well, maybe it's time to replace the pandemic phone. You know, the one they yeah. bought at the beginning, like, oh crap, I got to get home and, you know, I'm going to need something to have in my hand all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Joe says, you know, they were, and I think the EU is really driving Apple to make that change. Right. So if, uh, thank are. goodness, finally, I'm an Apple guy. Um, I am, you know, we've, we've been talking about this build again. I've got some parts I'll show here uh, just in a few minutes, but I have been, um, one of the things I did, um, is I've been looking for parts because they, because everybody encouraged me to, um, you know, just wait. And it's been hard, Marv. I'm not going to lie. It's been hard. It's been hard to wait for, uh, this, this black Friday stuff. Um, cause I want to buy now, but what I did is a, is to go to Amazon and I've started putting, you know, so I need, I still need a, a GPU. I need, um, uh, I'm, I still need an SSD. I need memory uh, for this thing. So those are kind of the three components that I'm still kind of, that I've put in my Amazon cart. Because what I didn't realize, if you leave items in your Amazon cart and the price change, when you come back and check it, it'll tell you. It'll, it'll tell you, yep. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. Right now, I haven't seen any big swings in this, but I'm kind of imagining maybe these GPUs will swing. I've actually seen them go up in price, not down, but we'll see how that goes. Um, well, I'm uh, wondering if there's, I mean, how good is the inventory right now? Remember a year ago, you couldn't find them. Yeah. Well, and if I wanted to buy used right now, I can get them to, I mean, I can get them $200 under the current retail. So they're super cheap. Now, you know, they were miners. So or chances are they were mining, right? Those those GPUs. Right. But um uh what I'm what I'm kind of doing then is I kind of use honey on these, the now owned by PayPal, which has been, I think, a recent acquisition from PayPal. But I use honey on them to give me alerts. And I've I've also put in alerts for like I think I'm buying a 360 TI. So I've put in that alert over at Slick Deals. So I get these emails, just kind of watching. Because I'm uh, watching every day, it's giving me some good ideas. You know, like I'm going to want to pay somewhere between 450 and 550 for this 360 Ti. That's the that's the price range I want to be in. And then I've got a couple of gigabyte Nasus that I'm looking at, so I'm kind of keeping those in mind. Now you know the deal. As soon as you buy something, right, Marv, it it always is cheaper somewhere else. Right. <laughs> right. So I was trying to look. So are all of those eight gig? Yeah, these are all eight gig V two, um, uh, uh, three hundred and sixty Ti cards. I do have one three hundred and sixty twelve gig in there. You know, that's under four at this point. If I wanted to go that route, but I think I've yeah. made that decision. I'm going to go with the Ti on those. So, it's you know you you it, yeah you got to kind of check the madness on this. You I watch these things like so I bought Christian recommended this board when we talked last so this is the tough gaming it's the uh it's the x570 pro uh, from gigabyte or no i mean from asus sorry right up there in the corner and um uh, this is the kind of the one we talked about i bought it for uh for 220 which was the amazon price of the night we did it and then well so he said i said to christian you think i should wait and he said yeah you should totally wait the next morning when I woke up, that board in my Amazon um, cart was two fifty seven. Wow! I was like, ah. Uh. So I found it. Uh, uh, I thought, okay, it's going up. I'm I'm going to pull the trigger on this thing. I found it at all places at Walmart for two nineteen, and their prices don't seem to move as fast. 
Yeah. So yeah, Walmart, uh, BH Photo, some of those other places are beating Amazon right now. It's kind of interesting that you say that. So I just purchased a, a WD Black SSD drive, mm -hmm. and you, I got. You know which one you got? What's the What's the model on that? It is the SN seven seventy. Okay. NVMe. Okay. So. Yep. Okay. But it's only one terabyte, and I got it. It was eighty nine bucks. Mm -hmm. So I wonder. I wonder how much lower they can go on those for Black Friday. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, and then you, you buy it, and then I mean, it always. It's like the uh, the the law of uh, Black Friday is. Yeah. Even on a Black Friday deal, the next day you find it cheaper somewhere else, and you're just like, yeah. <laughs> right, you know, type deal. So I probably, I probably am going to focus at this point because I'm going to buy. I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy this 360 Ti, which is about 500 bucks. Pretty sure I'm going to go 128 gig of RAM. That's another 400 bucks. And so I'm thinking, probably don't want to drop a grand all at the same time on unless I get two really great deals, right? So I have to choose between one or the other, and I think, I think the net, the uh, GPUs are where, I, where I'm going to go. Now, how are you looking at compatibility for these? Are you using PC Part Picker? Well, I know these three sixties will be just fine with the board that I have. Okay, so, but what about the memory? Uh, oh yeah, now when I do the memory, yeah, I am um, making sure I know the specs of the board, and then I'm making sure that the memory is. That's going to be all. Listen, buying memory is going to be a whole different exercise when I get down to it. I've identified some already, but it's still a little bit of work just to make sure the compatibility is there with them. You're absolutely right. I need to keep my eyes open and, and, and check for that as well. But yeah, I think I everything I have in my cart right now, I checked already and it's compatible. So okay. I, think, I think I'm in good shape there. And so if it's I just, not, I can send it back. Yeah, yeah, I just went through that. So I purchased a bunch of parts thinking i was gonna have to build a server yeah you got that board right there you gotta don't don't you know, why don't you show that what yeah. what you get so i got this uh gigabit pull it pull it back a little bit for me let me see here. there we go a c24 uh, uh 246 w4 yeah. <laughs> yeah now this is i don't think many people will go after this even though it's a server slash workstation motherboard i got it because I got this Xeon processor and I want to get the Xeon processor. This is, I think it's 16 cores because I was going to build this as a RDS server hmm. and I needed it to support 30 users. Yeah. Yeah. You were building so, server equipment. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, and I did this about six months ago Yeah, and I got all frustrated because I bought the processor and the fan separate uh -huh. and the fans were too big for the case. Uh -huh. And then it was a huge exercise yeah. to find the right fan to fit. So this yeah. time I bought the processor and the fan. Then I bought the board yeah. to, and that's where and I used the PC part picker. Did you buy, and I have been, I was using that early for that. Did um, that's a good reminder to go back to that again. Did you um, did you get memory for it? And how much memory would you? What's the board support, and how much would you put on it? So I'm only putting on one twenty eight. Only? <laughs> it's a server. I get it. No, I get yeah. it. Yeah. So I got two of these. Um, these are Corsair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was looking engines. at those as well. Yep. Yeah. So this yep. is the uh, sixteen two by sixteen gauge. So I got two of these. Um, 32, 64, uh, and then I'll do up to, uh, I'll start with 64, but I'll go to 128 if there's going to be any issues. Do you, do you remember for 64 about the price point on that? Uh, actually, I think I just had this up cause I was looking at something else. This was, yep. 78 bucks yeah. for, for the yeah. two by 16. Yeah. 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 The okay. 32 gig kit. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's about right right now. So for those, about seventy five to a hundred dollars for for uh, thirty two. Th yeah, two thirty two thirty two two by two sixteens yeah, two sixteens. Okay, now that's well. I don't want to get in because that's super boring audio uh, to go into <laughs> that. But 
certainly, um, uh, certainly I've been kind of, yeah, I don't know if there'll be, I mean, I guess I'm going to kind of wait and see if there'll be any black Friday specials on memory. Um, I'm thinking the hard drives might drop too. That's Western digital has kind of been clearing out. They've been offering some big discounts on some stuff. And so I'm thinking maybe we'll, if I could get that, I've got the SN850, so the version just up from yours. Um, I get that one terabyte instead of what you pay ninety eight for it. Is that what you said? For the for the w, one uh, eighty nine eighty nine for the for the eight fifty. It's a little. It's one fifty. So t- not quite twice as much. Thirty percent more. Whatever. But I'm kind of hoping that gets down like at one twenty. For me, it's a buy. Right at that point, if it drops to one twenty. I'm just going to buy it. Yeah, I'm going to be watching hard drives. I've got a couple of Synology builds that uh, we're going to be doing. So the 12 terabytes is what uh, the one customer needs. And we're going to try to, uh, we're getting a bigger unit. We're getting the 12 bay Synology. Oh, nice. We're going to start with six 12 terabytes in there uh, to start them up. And then another client, we're actually doing a virtual server on the Synology. So I'm going to use the Western Digital SSD drives for that. Yeah, that's a good way. A good way to do it. Yeah, you've liked you've liked that Synology brand, haven't you? I am. I am all in on <laughs> Synology. I don't know if you remember when yeah. you know I asked you about. Well, I hear about this Unraid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were going to go down that route. Uh, I had TrueNAS. I was looking at, mm-hmm. but what it boiled down for me was simplicity when it comes to the business clients and the support yeah. that if I ever ran into an issue, not that anything's wrong with the other two, but I wasn't going to get that corporate support Yeah, that I would need. Yeah. And easy. Cause they're all, they may not be on the exact same product, but you know who to go to. Right. Right. And, and you know how to get support from them. So yep. and a good there's way. a ton of apps. Yeah. Built in the Synology. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, between first, it was just the backup stuff. Then I did a surveillance camera system. Mm -hmm. Now I'm running, you know, virtual servers on them now. So playing with all of that. And, you know, I just, oh, I did, I just downloaded uh, the uh, Synology Photos app. Yeah. (laughs) So I have done my photos on there. Yep. Yeah. And most of those Drobo had one when I had a Drobo, you know, you can do that to the cloud. You can, you know, there's those services, but that's really nice. Right. So it automatically, you take a picture, it automatically moves it to the Synology. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's super cool. It's a great, it's a great uh, way to get it done. Doing a 365 backup for a client just started um, on Monday. Oh, nice. So yeah. There's a lot. Do you, you yeah. give do you give the user any access to the to the dashboard and the apps or do you pretty much do you hide no. that from them? No. Yeah. All they get is their access to the stuff they need for either that server or the files. Yeah. 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 And yeah, have you had any ask? Like any like they think they're IT people and they're like, oh, I want to get let me help. Yeah, I I have. But what's great about the Synology is you can actually give access just to the apps they need. Mm, So I've got one where there's an office manager and a tech on site. They want to have access to the backups. So I just give them access to that and nothing else. And how are they authenticating to Synology? So in that office, it's actually AD because I added the Synology to the domain. Mm. So they're authenticated through their Active Directory. Uh, All my other clients... Well, most of my other clients were just doing the Synology directory server. Okay. So they're just set up on, on uh, as a user on the Synology. Email and a password. Is that kind of the, the, or a username and a password? Use, username and a password. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that AD integration on Synology pretty easy or, or? Super easy. Oh, good. Okay. Literally, you just add it to the domain. Never and... said by anything about Active Directory. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> I was quite surprised when I did it. I just, you add the, the Synology to the domain, and then all of a sudden, all the domain groups, you know, everything is there. Yeah. You almost want to break it just to prove that it worked. <laughs> that was too easy. I, I need to do some things yeah. to, to prove that, that I actually they actually got it done. Um, Brian in the chat says, uh, we, I asked, what are you looking forward to on Black Friday? He says, I'm not looking forward to anything in particular. 
sometimes I look out for discounted gift cards. By the way, this is a this this is a great thing to do during this time of year. You know, a lot of local restaurants or sometimes they'll say, hey, come in and buy a $50 gift card and we'll give you 10 or 15 bucks, right, of your own. And it's not a bad way. I mean, if it's a place that you really like and you want to share that with others, it's a great way to do it. He says Black Friday makes uh, good gifts and, and money go a little bit farther. So, you know, that's a good. Have you ever done that, Marv, where you bought a gift card for somebody else, but you got another gift card that you got to keep? So we did that one time and I don't even remember the name of the card, but it was one of those where you could buy the gift card and it would work for, you know, 10 different restaurants or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so we did do that one time and, but I haven't thought to do that. Yeah. Recently. Applebee's is notorious for this. They, they, they just make a killing off of this. And the other thing, um, uh, end of year, uh, we are, you know, Gallup would allow us sometimes to buy gift cards and expense them for recognition. And so you could, you know, go buy the money or, I mean, go buy the gift card with company money and then you'd get the other gift card back, be able to use that. And they were like, that's cool. You know? Huh, and nice. yeah, you know, you kind of think well, I get to expense this. So gift cards can be, be interesting to see if we, if we, with restaurants trying to get people to come back and restaurants have kind of gotten price sensitive, knowing everybody's complaining about how expensive everything got all of a sudden. I'm starting to see a little competition kick in with restaurants and stuff where they're, you know, trying to combat that a little bit. Yeah. It's a double edged sword though, because we're fighting the, you know, a lot of stores can't keep staff. So yeah. the service, yeah. I mean, the serve. Yeah. You know, people yeah. have to know that food's going to take a little longer to get to you. Mm -hmm. So that dining experience has definitely changed. Yeah, it has for sure. Um, well, I, I tell you what, we, we, it's kind of changed our, our way of like dinner where pre pandemic, we probably went out three nights a week, you know, in some form or fashion could have been fast food or Chinese or pizza, but we we're still going out. Right. And now it might be one, you know, and some, some weeks, maybe not even that. And you just kind of go, I don't know. I mean, we could go out and drop, you know, 40 bucks pretty fast. You're, you're like, and well, listen, buying food at the grocery store hasn't gotten any cheaper either. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's hitting everybody all the way around. Yep. I was just trying to look for a story that uh, when you talked about going out to eat, <laughs> we, of course, had a Florida man story down here where uh, uh, a guy attacked an Uber driver because his food was late or something like that. I mean, just oh my gosh. stupid stuff. Yeah, people, people, friends, and not not my listeners because I know you guys are pretty calm, but friends, friends, let's let's all take a deep breath. Like, yep. Here in the United States, of course, uh, next Tuesday is voting day, and it's man, it's hot and contested. And I, I hope we have a, I hope we have a, I hope we have a smooth day. Woo, so everybody, I, just I everybody, mine, relax. I, I do mine by mail, so I I'm should've. done. <laughs> I should have. I didn't. We did our um, primaries that way this year, and then I, I just didn't get around to ordering the absentee ballot, and so now I've got to go. Now I've got to go. Yeah, it's Nebraska, so it's not going to be that bad. But, um, yeah, that's we we got. I hope next Thursday we're <laughs> we're not shooting each other. So it could be. Uh, it this it's um it, it's it, we live in interesting times. So let's just put it that. Yes, way. we do. So we do indeed. Marv, anything else uh, when we th when we think of Black Friday? Anything else you're hoping um uh, that you'll that you'll acquire during the Black Friday or even from a Christmas perspective? Well, I think that'll be the thing is to try to look for the wife is going to be making a list because uh, we, we, I don't know, we have like 30 people we got to buy stuff for, for our Christmas. And so I'm, I'm going to sit with her and make a list and, you know, whatever's on sale is what we're buying. Uh, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of sales. I do think even, even with inflation raging, I think there's going to be a lot of sales out there. The question will be the quality. Right. Right. I think we're going to see some questionable quality stuff come out of this cycle where yeah, you think you're getting it cheaper. Not sure you're getting the quality you would have gotten a couple of years ago. Well, I remember reading some advice that even on Amazon or wherever you get your stuff, 
stick with the name brands that you know. Mm, yeah. Don't buy, mm. and especially with electronics, you know, we have so many names that have popped up that, you know, look like the genuine thing, but it's, you know, it's a knockoff and it's, you know, 50% or whatever. And most of the time it's fine. But right now, I don't know if I trust it. Yeah. If it's too good to be true, right? They say it's probably, it probably is. And so probably some good, some good. I, I, um, I think after this computer build, I think I'm done for a while and I might clear out some stuff. Like I'm feeling a little bloated, you know, and it's just like, all right, it's time to, I'll probably get this thing built. And then the first of the year, start moving things that were on other computers onto the new one, you know, build a VM or do something different. And then decommission. I got a bunch of old equipment. I'll probably now. I remember you. I didn't catch oh, the entire show where you yeah. were talking about it, but um, you had uh, tried to talk about all the things that you're going to move from your old computer to the new computer and stuff. Now, have you got? Is it fully spec'd out? You know the drive size that you're getting. Do you know, you know, all the things you're going to need peripheral wise uh, to connect? Yeah, I think I'm okay in that space. I think okay. I got, I think I got to kind of figure it out. And there's, listen, there's a lot of stuff I do that I don't need to do. And it just <laughs> needs to stop. You know, I, a lot of the crypto stuff that I've been doing, I think I'm to the end of it where it's like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I need all these hard drives anymore. I mean, I have 84 terabytes of hard drive space and it would be cool to keep it, but I don't, I don't know if I just need that much. You know, I probably could get away with 10 just to be honest. I mean, how much, how much of your stuff is duplicated? Um, well, my own data uh, duplicated pretty well, right? From that, <laughs> but, you know, most of the hard drive space I don't use for storage. I use it for crypto, right? I use it for nonces in the crypto stuff that I'm doing. So, you know, you think, oh, that's, that's a lot of storage space. Well, I only really have about two terabytes of data, maybe three. Uh, with all the podcasting stuff. So I don't have a lot anyways. Right. And I, so I keep a local copy and I keep a, um, I, I mean, I've got a copy on my Mac. I got a copy on my Moro data box and I've got a copy B2 backup and I'm, I'm good. You know, at that point I've got what everything that I need. So has your crypto stuff slowed down? Oh, for like, sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so sure. that gold rush is over. Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. The hills are, hills are picked clean. <laughs> so to speak, the mines are a little, well, it's just not what it was and it was right. okay. It was fun to do. And, you know, uh, so the good news is I can sell those hard drives. You know, I got a bunch of four terabyte hard drives. I can clear them out for oh, 20 yeah, or 25 those... bucks each, whatever, get rid of them, you know, move them on. Um, so yeah, some of, so I think some of that stuff, I think I'd like to get down to maybe two, two windows computers and a Mac and be consider that everything, you know, today I have five. So, yeah, yeah. you still going to have your six monitors or eight monitors? Oh, or let's not get crazy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. Let's not get crazy, Marv. Jeez. <laughs> You're questioning me on that. How can you, how dare you? How dare you question me on monitors? I might add another one actually uh, in the, in the, because I have a, I've got, you know, I've got this 34 inch ultra wide here that I use for the Mac, which is just perfect. But I think for the Windows box, I may get another one that's uh, 4k and cause I want to do some gaming and some, I want to do flight simulator on it. And I want to do some other things I want to do on it. So I may, I may upgrade that monitor, which I can't throw away other monitors. So they'll just get redeployed somewhere else. Okay. Now how are you running your monitors? Are you running the, all of those off the card or are you doing adapters? Um, no, so the 360 Ti only has four outputs, right? Yeah, well, some of the so three of the monitors are work monitors that come off of a docking station that okay. support, support three monitors plus the laptop, right? So that's four right there. Okay. And then the win I have a Windows box, uh, 4700, um, that uh, has two, and I, I don't even, I used to have GPUs in there, but I took those out and sold them when the prices were so nuts, <laughs> got rid of those. So those are coming off the, um, those are coming off the ones off the motherboard. Yeah, there's a okay. VDI and a VGA. Works perfect. The Mac just has one monitor, this ultra wide. Then the the I have a Windows, I have a Surface that's powering a 24 inch uh, monitor that I have a portrait that has weather full time 
on it. It keeps the, my, my radar is up full time on it. So, um, yeah, so no one computer, I'm not trying to want run all nine monitors off of one computer. <laughs> they all, they all, but I use, um, what do I use? Let's see. What's the name of this program? I use, mm, how about I show it to myself so I know what it is. Synergy. Okay. I use Synergy Pro, which goes, goes across both Windows and Mac to share a keyboard. So it's KVM, right? Virtual KVM solution. So I, I have one keyboard and mouse for them all. But, right. but yeah. So it kind of allows me to offload some processing too. You know, so when not one computer is doing everything. Well, you see the comment where you need a monitor wall. Oh, so. for sure, Jay. Yeah, are you kidding me? That's kind of like that. Oh. I'm surprised you don't have one behind you for the podcast where you That's can have. Stuff I used to. Rolling. I used to. You I used did? to have two. Yeah, early a couple of years ago, <laughs> I had two right here. I actually have two monitors here that for work um, I could have on. I never found them to be like I would do it for a while and I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of distracting behind me. Uh, my Surface RT, which isn't even turned on, but it's right here. You can kind of see it on the shelf that's there. Um, yeah, I, I tried doing the monitor wall thing behind me and I was like, nah, that's not as interesting as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be cool. Not so much. I like the monitors in front of me as opposed to behind me. So um, what I what what happened is I have them behind me and then I'd want to use them for something. So I take them down, put them in front of me because I was like, OK, I want to move this process to this monitor and have it on there all the time. You're right. So, um, yeah, I, I'd love I there, listen, I'd love like 16 of the same size monitors all on the wall that were all in different, maybe curved around me or one of those 55 inch curved that I'd put in portrait mode that would go this way, you know, like circle, uh, uh, and put two of them to, uh, it's, it's a sickness. Yeah. It's a sickness. You need to have that 3d surround sound with it too. Right. Uh, yeah. Sound. I don't care about as much. No, no, no. But I just love like, you know, the over to the left here, my radar runs on a portrait, which runs really like, uh, it's got a forecast center in it. And so I can see all this stuff, right? Um, it runs really well in portrait mode. And then the surface has the, the home assistant dashboard on it for all of the, and they're both in dark mode. And so <laughs> like I can turn my monitors, you know, just from here, I can turn my monitors on and off, turn all my lights on and off, you know, cause it's all right here on the, on the home assistant, you know, kind of thing. So like, I can turn the studio lights off. You can't really see that in my picture, but those are controlled right here. Like the garage, most of the lights down here, I can turn on and off. Yeah. It's a sickness. Yeah. I uh, still have none of that at the house. <laughs> well, it's not such a bad thing. Not such Although a bad thing. I am thinking about it here though. I am thinking yeah. about being able to do stuff from here. It's listen, it's super handy to go into the garage and say, Hey, turn on, Hey lady, turn on the garage light. Boop comes on. You know, that's kind of nice to, to be able to, or when I come in the house to be able to say, Hey lady, shut, shut the garage door. Cause I forgot. And then, you know, down it goes, you know, and you're like, Oh, that's yeah, that'd be cool. I'm just right now. I think my next step is to get those automated light sensors that when you enter a room, the lights come on and when you leave, they go off. Mm. How, how, that's, that's big for me. Yeah. Don't do it in the studio because you'll no. be sitting there and then the lights will go off. You know, because you don't, you'll be podcasting and your lights will go off and then you got to go. Yeah. You know, and then they come back on. So don't do that. That When they built the studio for me at Gallup, I said, you can do anything you want. No automation on the lights. I want them on or I want them off. Yeah. You know? um, that's for home here. I yeah. won't do that. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't, you don't want to do that, but it is kind of cool. You know, we've got some routines like on the front door. The front door light, we have a, a paneled or a, a um, stained glass a window in our front door. And so when it gets dark, it automatically turns the light on behind it to 50% and illuminates the door. In the morning, when sun comes up, it goes off. That's kind of you a nice. You your door. Uh-huh. Yeah, Is that for like when you drive home at night, you can, it's oh, on? Or... So, people, so my neighborhood can enjoy my front door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's stained glass. Why would I want to, why would I want to hide it? So, okay. and 
the light is super efficient, right? It's just an LED light. So, but you can, and we only set it at 50%. So it's not like I'm burning that much power with it. Now, do you have, <laughs> we're so over it. Do you oh, have okay. ground, do you have ground lighting as well? No, no, no. I oh, don't. okay. No, I don't. Cause that's what the wife wants. She wants all yeah. of those ground lights that we can control and the different lights and then the party lights in the back. And I'm like, no. Yeah, I should have that on the I should have the party lighting on my deck where I can, you know, do those kinds of things. But I just bought Christmas lights and stapled them up and I think, well, that'll give me five years, five or six years. And they're like seven dollars on clearance at the end of the year. Yeah, we did those around our patio as well on the inside, but she wants them outside. She wants to do around the pool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. uh no, you should do it for her, Mark. You should do it for her. <laughs> She deserves it. <laughs> she got the pool. <laughs> the lights, the mood lighting is great though. We were just out. We, you know, we were having the, the, the spectacular weather ends tonight, but for the last couple of days, we've had 75 at seven o'clock at night and I've just been enjoying the time on the deck. Right. And so last night we went out there and turned all the lights off, but just brought up the deck lights, you know, under, under lighting deck lighting. And it was just beautiful. You know, so, you know, don't, don't underestimate the power of lighting, of mood lighting around the pool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, and don't spend a ton of money on it. Cause it's just going to break anyway. So I always, that's one of those areas where I just, I, I, I don't want to say as cheap as possible, but I do kind of go as cheap as possible on those. And then they'll break. Don't get frustrated. Rip them down a couple years later, maybe four five, six, and then place them with something else cheap well we gotta figure something out because we've already got so we do have some lighting out already with uh that was came with the house but we got they were electrical outlets that we put the photocentric lights mm -hmm. so that they're on so as soon as it gets dark they all come yeah. on yeah so yeah. i want to take that power because we have outlets on those lights as well and when i get light poles but i want to put those in sturdy so i don't have to worry about taking them down or a hurricane taking them down. So they're going to be, yeah, yeah they're going to be like, you know, those telephone light poles. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then we'll do lighting from there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it will be great. Just put in, you know, just bef like building a computer, just make sure you plan it and then let it sit for a few days, then go back and say, okay, is there anything I forgot? Because right. if you go to wire that stuff, if you're going to add any wiring or you want to add any, power out there i mean if you're running wiring you should just run power because you never know put outlets on those things it's kind of nice to have it out there you, you think why would i ever use this but you know you might there may be a day when you're out in the yard and you're like man i wish there was an outlet out here you know so well marv thanks again for coming on i appreciate it always great to catch up with you and always great to um you know, to spend some time with you, Aaron Lawrence, uh, we're working on maybe getting her on your show here, not confirmed just yet, but we're working on it. Would that be for the black Friday one? When is that, that again? That would, and, that would be for the black Friday on and when is it? And where's it going to be at Wednesday, uh, November 23rd. And if you head over to, um, the YouTube channel or Facebook, just type in IP business podcasts. We stream live to YouTube and the Facebook and, I don't think I'm going to have it ready, but we're working on doing an Amazon live as well. Oh, nice. Because we're an Amazon affiliate, but I don't know if I can get that set up because I don't have time to play with it. Uh, but I will be putting out uh, announcements both on the website, itbusinesspodcast.com, and on all my social media channels. Cool. Cool. Yeah, get out there, be a part of it, come and see it. Um, next week, I'll have Dave from Mackey Gab on, and well, it'll be an all Mac show. You have a Mac now, don't you? How's that? How's I do. That? How's that going? You doing all right? You using it a lot? It's uh, it's sitting over here to my right. <laughs> yeah. Probably hasn't been open in a couple of weeks, but uh -huh. I have it. All right. It's a good. You have a new update waiting for you when you, when oh, you really? open that thing back up. It's it's actually a beautiful update. One of the um, uh, one of the things it allows too with an iPhone is you can now remotely use the camera on your iPhone to podcast with. So, you know, you, I used Ecamm software to get that done before and I always had okay. to plug it in. Now, uh, you can, uh, you can just use your iPhone, put it on a mount, you know, somewhere on your monitor and use it as the, 
as a webcam. Okay, because that was one of the things when uh, I started looking at the Amazon Live. Yeah. You have to download the app. Mm. It's not like you can just connect a webcam and stream. Oh. So it's an app. So if I can connect the phone to the yeah. Mac, and then that makes me you have, feel a, you have an better. iPhone? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look into it. You have to have the, the most current version on both. I haven't done it yet, but Ed did it. Ed Sullivan did it for me on Sunday. All right. And I was like, mm, that's interesting. So, uh, and you have to be on the same Wi Fi network, of course, to make that work. Um, but give it a try. Super All good. Right. Well, we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv. If you want to join us in our Discord group, head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. If you want to leave a message for me, homegadgetgeeks.com, there's a little microphone button. Just leave your message. Then email me, Jim at theaverageguy.tv, and let me know you did that because. I don't check that as often because you guys just don't really leave messages, but it's in my notes. So we'll, I'll say it anyways. Big thanks to Christian as well uh, over there. Maple Grove Partners at maplegrovepartners.com. Secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. And, of course, you know that's Christian. And if you need hosting on just about anything, give them a ring. Maplegrovepartners.com. Nobody calls anymore. Send them an email. Uh, we want to thank you. For, if you're listening live, we want to thank you for coming out and for hanging out with us uh, tonight. Uh, it, we officially start the holiday season. I know that Halloween's a holiday, but I don't think it really counts. We officially start the holiday season in the United States now. Thanksgiving coming up, Christmas, Black Friday. All the good stuff is coming. Stay safe, my friends. With that, we'll say goodbye.